YouTube, this is Michael from Asymmetrical Preparedness. Today's video is on prepper acronyms, or common acronyms used in the uh, you know prepper world, prepper community, stuff like that. So uh, this goes out, uh, it was an idea from a subscriber, CanZ. So since you opened up a can of worms, let's see what I can do. <laughs> Sorry, had to do that. All right, so he... Uh, or he or she, I, I don't know, pointed out the fact that there's a lot of acronyms out there that new preppers or even seasoned preppers may not know what they mean. So, um, some of the acronyms that uh, they put out, I don't know what they mean. I'm like, I've been in the military, for, I was in the military for 20 years. I've worked uh, private sector, I've worked DOD. Uh, I've been prepping for at least 10, what, 10, 15 years, something like that, and I don't know what some of those acronyms were. So, you know, I'll do my best. Um, so EDC, everyday carry. That's what you have on you. That means like, uh, you know, like survival cord bracelet, a pocket knife, I have a tourniquet in my pocket, um, different things like that. Um, what you have on you, you know, like your handgun, if you can carry. To and from work, I can't carry because I still work, you know, for the government and stuff in a secure facility, so I can't carry a gun. And I'm limited in what kind of pocket knife I can carry. The blade can only be so long. So it is what it is. All right, next one is B-O-B, -B, bug out bag. That's your bag. There's a lot of different words for it. That's your bag that you're going to use. You're going to just grab and go. You have to grab something and run out of the house to get out of there. Um, it's also a G. HB, which is get home bag. I prefer that. That's what I have in my vehicle and stuff like that. I mean, to me, a bug out bag is more of a long term thing. That's a long term patrol pack. If I have to get out of here for some reason, that is best, definitely not the best situation that I'll be in. Um, but yeah, so I cover B O B G H B inch I N C H bag. That is, I'm never coming home bag. That is your bag with everything you can possibly carry on your back that you're capable of carrying, that you're going to need to survive, because it's long-term. All right, good, G-O-O-D. That stands for get out of dodge. You could have a good bag, get out of dodge bag. It's kind of the same thing as the B-O-B, the bug out bag, the get home bag, the inch bag. They're all similar terms. Uh, B-O-V, which is your bug out vehicle. It's a vehicle you take to bug out with. Um, it could be whatever vehicle you have, uh, or it could be a bicycle, or it could be a motorcycle, it could be a quad, it could be whatever you have, whatever you use. B-L-L, B-O-L, bug out location. That's where you're going to when you bug out, whether it be your, you know, mountaintop cabin property like I have, or you have uh, just a place in the national forest that you've scouted and set up and stuff like that. So, MAG, M-A-G. Mutual assistance group. This is the group of people that you're going to hopefully bug out, bug in, or form up and survive an SHTF event with. These are your good people, your tribe, the people you're going to count on, rely on to do the things with. Um, all right, so let me see, what was another one? Um, oh, Alice. Alice is the old. Um, clip style web gear used by the military. It had a belt and had this little metal clip that clipped over the belt and clipped the different pieces of gear on. It stands for all purpose, lightweight, individual uh, carry equipment. That's Alice. Molly is the new stuff. That's the little st straps that you hook things through for your web gear. It's basically, it's not web gear anymore, it's Molly gear. But for military, tactical gear. And that is your. Um, Modular lightweight load carrying equipment, Molly, M O L L E, and that's how you pr pr probably pronounce it. Also, with Molly, M R E, meal ready to eat. That's what the military issues its troops to go into the field. Little packets of food, sustenance. Um, you know, like uh, candy, cookies, a main meal, um, a side dish, a juice drink, a coffee, or a hot cocoa. All those things. That's an M R E. Um, GORP, G-O-R-P, that's good old raisins and peanuts. That's just what it is, raisins and peanuts. It's called GORP. Um, so OPSEC, Operational Security. 
that's what you, that's the security you do around your operations. You don't talk about certain things, you know, I don't talk about how many rounds of ammo I have, how many guns I have, how much food storage I have, where I live, my address, stuff like that. It's just stuff that people don't need to know. Um, here, just one sec. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, it was getting, it's a little colder out here than I thought it was, so I had to go get a little, something a little warmer on. Okay, yeah, so OPSEC. And along with that is PERSEC, which is personal security, InfoSec, which is information security, just a bunch of acronyms the military uses for different things of, you know, different securities, that are things that we um, try to secure, information, data, stuff like that. So, uh, and I say we, I'm not in the military anymore, I'm so used to it. Um, SAS, um, I'm pretty sure what he meant, was, or the person meant was the Special Air Service. It's British Special Air Service, Australian Special Air Service, it's their... It's one of their special operations forces, um, and the reason why it applies to the prepper world is you see a lot of SAS survival manuals, the Special Air Service Survival Manual. They are very good because the SAS has been out in uh, you know austere environments doing the things for a long time, so their survival manuals are very good. So I'm pretty sure that's what that acronym was, what they were getting at was. Uh, SOP, Standard Operating Procedures. Those are the procedures you're going to have in place for security. You know, where do you set security? What your fields of fire are? Uh, when you do watch rotations? When you do um, all the things? When you patrol? How many people you patrol? What your reaction of contact is? What happens if this happens? What happens if? Basically, that's your SOPs. Uh, IFAC, Individual First Aid Kit. That's what you carry on you. That's what, um, you know, there's lots of different videos on IFACs. Um, I've shown it on my Battle Belt videos. And such along that lines is a PFAC, which I'm pretty sure they're just using for a personal first aid kit. Um, that's uh, all that is, like an IFAC. TQ, which is a tourniquet. That's, you know, like a uh, uh, SOFT tourniquet, a CAT tourniquet, CAT, which is combat application tourniquet. They're just different tourniquets to um, stop blood flow if you're um, on an extremity. Only on an extremity. Obviously, if you're bleeding from your head, you're not going to put a tourniquet around your neck. <laughs> All right? So, uh, um, okay, 550 cord. That is a cord, also known, a.k.a. parachute cord, because it used to be used to rig parachutes in the military. Well, I, I'm not sure if it still is. I forget. And it's been a while since I've been in the military. But uh, it's a 7, 8, or 9 internal strand um, cord that's like 32 two to 35 weave or something like that. Um, I, I forget the exact specification on it. We didn't really care. We just use it. Um, cordage. You know, you can use it for shoelaces. You can shoot, you're tying up tents, um, tying down your gear, hooking up stuff. I mean, whatever. We use it for like a billion different things. 550 cord is awesome. P38 is a can opener. It's old. It's a little metal thing. The, fl the little blade thing flips up to the side. You use it like this along the edge of a can. Just old school can opener. Military. Um, SHTF is SHIT hits the fan. Or stuff hits the fan. That is indicative of something bad going on. Like economic collapse, EMP, you know, whatever the situation. There's just a million of them out there. Um, W-R-O-L is without rule of law. That is meaning that society is broken down. There's no more law enforcement. There's no rule of law. It's basically anything goes. So lots of bad guys out there doing the bad things. Um, T-O-T-W-A-K-I. T-E-O-T-A-W-A-K-I. The end of the world as we know it. Same thing. Same as basically W-R-O-L or S-H-T-F. Um, let me see, SOL, that is, um, you are stuff out of luck, or S-H-I-T, out of luck. FUBAR, which is effed up beyond any recognition, military term. EOD, I think they were getting at, uh, to me it's explosive ordnance disposal, but I'm military. So I think, this is nothing, abbreviations mean different things to different people. I think they meant end of days which is kind of like a T.O. Tawaki thing. Um, EOTW, end of the world, kind of along those same lines. CME is a coronal mass ejection. That is a basically a big solar flare that would cause an EMP to happen, which would cut out, you know, affect the power grid and vehicles and anything that uses electronics. 
which is EMP, electromagnetic pulse. That can be set off by a big solar flare, a high burst nuclear device, uh, which is also HEMP, which is a high altitude electromagnetic pulse caused by a nuclear weapon or something like that. It knocks out the power grid, power, since it's back to the 1800s, in a nutshell. It doesn't affect everything. It's not 100% effective, stuff like that. But in a nutshell, that it is. All right, Murphy's Law. It's a military thing. Well, I don't know. It's just in everything. What can go wrong will go wrong. That's why we train. We train, 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 so that no matter what happens, we have the ability to react instinctively in a second. You know, no second-guessing ourselves. So that's why, you know, we train all the time, different scenarios and stuff like that, because what can go wrong will go wrong. All right, next one is... NBC, nuclear biological chemical. It is just the NBC, nuclear biological chemical, warfare, attacks, protections, all the uh, things you put in place to protect yourself against them. All right, FIFO, that is first in, first out. That is basically when, if you got uh, a squad out running around, your point man, you know, he's like the first one in. Okay, then you regroup, you turn around, and he's also the first man out. So he's the point man going out. Now, you don't always have to be FIFO, you know. You can be Elm or, uh, sorry, Limo, which is, or Elm, El I forget, last man, or first man in, last man out. Anyway, there's different scenarios you can, you can set up, and that's part of your SOPs. So, C-RATS, C-R-A-T-S, that is combat rations. That's back before the MRE, before the meal ready to eat. It's the old version of the military's food for its troops. Uh, and you'll see on something military tactical here, NKDA. That is no known drug allergies. That is for medical purposes. As, as usually you'll see next to it a blood type patch, like O positive, A negative, but B positive, whatever it is. Showing your blood type. So if you need a blood transfusion or something like that. All right, here's some military terms that I added in. If you ever see VG, when you're talking about a uh, firearm, it is a vertical grip. If you see BCG, that is bolt carrier group. That is the bolt for an AR-15, or for other, for other weapons are also, also use bolt carrier groups. Uh, BUIS, that is backup iron sights. Those are, if you were using an optic as your primary um, um, sighting system, you have the backup sights that give you an ability to engage and, and utilize that weapon system if your main optic goes down, fails, breaks, whatever. Okay, M4, that is basically, it's a carbine um, version of the civilian M M6, or sorry, AR-15. M16 is the rifle, the full 20-inch barrel version of the same platform. M4, AR-15, M16, they're all basically, it's the same family. It just depends on barrel length. Um, the M, military, so M4, M16, you're not going to get. Because those are assault rifles, because those are fully automatic. You do not get assault rifles because you're a civilian. Semi-automatic only. Okay, M249, that is a SAW, the squad automatic weapon. Is it a 5.56 caliber um, belt-fed light machine gun used by the military? M240 is a belt-fed machine gun, chambered in 762 by 51 or 308, just a medium machine gun. Um, with that M2, the Maud Deuce, that is a belt-fed 50 caliber machine gun, heavy machine gun. Uh, M9 is the Breda handgun, the Breda M M9 9mm handgun. M14, battle rifle, chambered in 762 by 51, used Vietnam War-ish, but it never really saw that much service because it didn't see World War II and it barely saw Vietnam because it was replaced by the M16. So people that say the M14 is so battle-proven, where? Tell me where the M14 was battle-proven. Until recently in the Middle East, it was utilized, it was re rebuilt, revamped, new stock system, optics, stuff like that, and used. Great weapon system, don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking it. But it is not so battle proven as people try to make it. All right. Um, let me see. Okay, this is a funny story. Talking about how, how uh, abbreviations mean different things to different people. So I'm in this vehicle. My 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 guys, uh, my team with some of the. Uh, um, um, how do I say it? Um, uh, sorry, I just have to readjust. 
technical type guys, um, technicians, and they were going to go just work on some kind of system or something like that. So my guys and I were talking about DMs, and uh, one of the guys, one of the technicians turns to us and he's like, oh, he's like, oh. you guys talking about dun dungeon, dungeon Master? And we all start rolling, we're like, what the heck? We're like, no, we're not talking Dungeon Master, we're talking Designated Marksman. <laughs> Which is basically like a lot of people refer to it improperly as a sniper. Okay, a sniper is not a designated marksman. A marksman is not a designated sniper. A sniper can fill can fill a designated marksman role, and the designated marksman does the shooting part, the most part that pe most people associate with snipers. Um, it is a highly effective individual behind a highly accurate weapon system that is engaging targets from a distance. And has the ability to do so. Overwatch, um, you know, police use them. Law enforcement. So the guys you see on the rooftops in in, in Hollywood movies, you know, shooting down at people. Okay, with that DMR, that is a designated marksman rifle. That is a weapon system that designated marksmen designated marksmen employ. Um, let me see. MBR, main battle rifle. That is like. The M14 I was just talking about, or the FNFAL, or the German G3, aka HK91, PTR91, that that whole family of rifles. Um, it could also be a 308 chamber, like an AR10. It is a, a main battle rifle. It's heavier. It, you know, it's not the intermediate cartridge system. They are rifles that utilize full-on rifle cartridges instead of the intermediate cartridges like the 762 by 39 in the AK47 or the 5.56 in the AR-15 M4, that family. Okay, RP is a rally point. That's where you meet up when you're out patrolling, when you're in route, when you're doing squad movements, troop movements, um, when you're around your bug out locations, stuff like that, when you're on your bug out routes, stuff like that. It's, it's places you meet up. Uh, ARP is your alternate rally point. Same kind of along those lines. All right, PWS, your primary weapon system. That is your rifle. A handgun is an SWS, secondary weapon system. Contrary to Hollywood, we don't carry handguns into combat situations, unless we absolutely have to, which I don't see that happening. LPOP, which is listening post, observation post. That's a guard post. It's where you somebody can sit and listen and observe and also guard and protect um, different things. CQB, close quarters battle. That is going into a house, going in an urban environment, doing all the stuff, cutting the corners, taking out the bad guys in the in the places, doing the things. CQC, same thing, close quarter combat. Mout, M O U T, military operations in urban terrain. That is basically urban warfare, in a nutshell. All right, asymmetrical warfare, A W or four G W, fourth generation warfare. It's kind of what the channel is named after. It's a like guerrilla style warfare. It is where the lines between civilians, military, politics, all these things are kind of blurred. It's kind of an all-on um, going back to, uh, hearkening back to older school warfare or um, revolution type things where it's, it's all-out warfare. It's not just troops against troops. There's lots of different ass, uh, facets to it. I can't really go into that, but it is, you know, hit and run tactics, guerrilla tactics, stuff like that. Um, Rule of three, proper planning, or, sorry, rule of three. <laughs> Human body can go three minutes without oxygen, three days without water, three weeks without food. It's just one of those rules that people like making. All right, the 10 C's of survival, modified by me. Number one, cutting tool. I'm actually, I'm not going to name them. Cutting tool, combustion device, cover, container, Cordage, compass, candle, aka light, flashlight, cargo tape, any kind of tape, calories, and combat capable firearm because I am who I am. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's a list of, it's not an all inclusive list. There's a million different, you know, abbreviations out there, but I hope that helps you out. And uh, thank you, Can Z, for the idea. It was a good idea. I hope this helps. I love you guys out there. Um, please do the things. Prep a little every day. Work on your fitness levels. Um, if you like the videos, please like, please subscribe, comment below. 
I love you guys and blessings to you and yours.